Hello and welcome to Merlin's Brick News, the weekly show on all things brick building where we talk about set updates and announcements from all the major brands, mocks of the week and new Lego ideas entries as well. Information is presented as always by setdb.org, the best source for set information on the internet. All right, we will get started with Kobe actually this week. There's no update from Bluebricks and as always in alphabetical order, Kobe is next. Actually, Kato would be next, but... Um, there are no announcements from their side as well. By the way, I'm a bit late this week. More sincere apologies. It was just um, I was a bit sick actually this week. So that postponed everything slightly. Plus, however, I put this news show together already on Tuesday based on my regular schedule. So I'm a bit behind as well. There's this, a slight gap actually. So for instance, we are not going to talk about the new Lego uh, Lord of the Rings uh, announcement. But don't you worry. We'll talk about this next week. And I do assume that I will be back on schedule next week as well. Anyhow, we are now at Kobe and here we have a couple of availabilities. Um, actually, most and foremost over here in Europe, um, as always with Kobe, a bit problematic and other um, in different areas of the world. Actually, technically, Amazon.com has a listing for this one, but I think it's actually a shipment from Europe as well, so it's quite expensive. But anyhow, the BM13 Card Yusha, um, I've talked about this one before, I think, yes, in my catalog. A special edition of the news uh, series. I talked about this one here. So this is just about availability. Um, over here in Europe, it's roughly between 37 to 42 bucks. Um, that, of course, in Europe includes tax. And yeah, like I said, there is an Amazon US listing, but I think that is a shipment from a European shop as well. Anyhow, um, is based on uh, Kobe's list price actually over here in Europe of 47 bucks. We're talking about 10.7 cents a piece. Um, so yeah, this one is just a quick note on availability and the same thing. And here we do not even have a listing on Amazon.com, but over here in Europe, you can get it from Brickmore, that is in Austria, or Blue Bricks in Germany. Um, the A10 Sunderbolt 2 Warthog, uh, the 5837 for the 633 pieces over here. You pay roughly uh, 45 bucks or 46 bucks. Kobe itself is listing it um, with 55. So somewhere between seven and nine cents is what you have to pay. So two availabilities of the new January wave of Kobe. And then we have a, a ton of announcements actually because Kobe, and this will take a second to load, my apologies, um, Kobe has brought out their or released their second catalog. I, to be honest, I've never really understood why they are doing it like this, but they have like two different formats of catalog. Uh, one they call, I don't know, uh, this is just the international catalog, and then they have this other one. Anyhow, in the first catalog where I made the special series a couple of weeks ago, they had a ton of announcement, and this catalog here is just adding a couple on top. It's not that many, but nevertheless, we will take a look at it. And then there's something um, right on page three, actually. A lot of folks over here in Europe, at least, I do know, are very excited about that Kobe is entering the train scenery there have been a couple of announcements in the past or hints they talked about this in their live streams um, instagram hints plus i think last year they did a collaboration with a museum i think it was somewhere in norway or something where they produced the train and since then the whole kobe train has been going on a thingy and um, long story short now they have the first real announcements and we are talking about i mean this looks like a lot right like you have on this page here um actually four different locomotive sets however it's basically all the same it's the um uh, the DRB class 52, so uh, Baureihe BR actually, that is what Baure BR stands for, Baureihe 52, that is actually one of the most um, uh, manufacturers um, steam locomotives on earth. I think they made overall 15,000 of these, I think 7,500 during World War II. Actually, this was a design that was simplified during um, the World War II, during the Nazi era by Germany um, to just um, optimize the production manufacturing process uh, during war times. And um, so this is where they could mass manufacture it like this. I think during the Second World War in Germany, they produced something like 50 to 60 a day, which was quite a lot for the, for the time. Anyhow, as you can see here, Kobe has made different versions. So we will start with the 6280 
uh, that um, is going to be released in April. This is the executive edition of the whole thing. So as, as you can see, if you uh, look here on, let's say it's it's based on a layer on or sitting on top of a layer of two plates. So it has a plaque and everything. So it's a typical executive, a little bit like the, I don't know, one by 12 scale vehicle. So um, the idea, I guess, is that you can uh, present it in a nice way. You have two minifigures and you can switch between German and Polish insignia. And then um, follow up, following after that will be a gray version. I'm not really sure. I've never seen a gray version personally, but I have seen models of the gray one. So I guess that was a thing. Anyhow, we are talking about the 6281 going to be released in uh, May. It has 70 pieces less. Um, I guess this is simply for the stand, um, which is not included in the regular version or in the gray version, I should rather say. And has only one minifigure. Both of them are scale 1 by 35. Actually, all of them are scale 1 by 35. And this version here is 67 centimeters in length, 14 in heights, and 10 depths. Um, and then we move on to the 6282. So this is basically the same thing. It's again the standard edition, um, but it's in black, not in gray. So you will get in April the executive edition. I guess beginning of April, usually the executive edition gets like a two week head start. And then they after that, you will see the 6282, which is basically the same locomotive, but it has again 70 pieces less. So my guess is the stand is the only real difference and the plaque and everything. And, um, and of course, only one minifigure. Um, but nevertheless, it's the same thing. And then we are moving on. And this is, um, uh, what is this actually in English? In German, it's like the tender, like the coal tender um, in behind the locomotive. So there is a version, the 6283, which is again two and one by means of you can switch German and Polish uh, sign, but without this part. So it's like the first part of the uh, locomotive only. And um, it has only 1,630 pieces also going to be released in April. But at the end of the day, it's the same locomotive. It's still the uh, class 52 one um, or Baureihe 52 uh, would be in German. And yeah, it's 41 centimeters in length. But of course, height and depth are the same, 14 by 10 centimeters. So long story short, like I said, four sets. Yes, you have it in different colors and you have like like half a set, if you, if you will, you can buy as well. But but at the end of the day, it's the same locomotive. So it looks like a lot more than it actually is. But I mean, it's great. I mean, don't get me wrong. Personally, I guess I would go with for the 6280 um, or the 82, like the whole thing and in black and red, because this is how like traditionally they have been, you know, running around over here in Europe uh, back in the day. And then what they will also... Um, um, have it's like a wagon for transport um it's, it's funny that kobe is also using here the german ter terminology in this catalog which is the international one schwerer platform wagon i have no idea how to um, translate that but anyhow uh, it's basic. I mean, you, you get the idea what this thing is. In general, a lot of folks, personally, I'm not the biggest train specialist in bricks. I mean, I have built a couple in, in recent years, but um, based on, let's say, all the folks who, who spend more time with this stuff, and, and you can see this here as well. I mean, these things look purely like display. It's a little bit like the recent Lego Harry Potter train. Um, by means these things are not designed to drive around. So you cannot electrify them and based on what a couple of folks told me, they assume this will be the same for this wagon as here because I was believing, okay, this thing looks really beautiful. So this could be, and you have all the pet printed pieces, of course, that typically come with Kobe. So this could be pretty cool to combine, for instance, I don't know, with, your, with a Lego train or with Blue Bricks trains, of course, but a general assumption in the community seems to be that these things can't drive. Um, because they are they are not flexible, so you can't you cannot go, get around corners. Because if you look at here at these wheels, um, they are so let's say squeezed in here. This is at least how it looks like on this picture. That there is a very good chance that this thing cannot go around any corner. But anyhow, let's see. Um, at, at least, I mean, I'm really excited um, because they look beautiful. You will have Kobe piece quality. Kobe, I guess, next to Lego is one of the companies making the best black pieces. I mean, black never looks really good in bricks, in my personal opinion, but Kobe is, is close, closer than most others. So let's, let's see how this one goes. I'm personally really excited. And uh, let's move on to a couple of other news 
And we are talking about, yeah, here, they will have a new submarine, a German U-boat. Um, I think they did with the 4828, they did U-47. So this is U-96. Um, I guess it's more or less the same set. I mean, it has like a few, we can open up the other one in a second, but it has 444 pieces That is uh, that, that are like a bit more than the other one, than the old one. But I think like... I assume 95% it's going to be the same. Um, let's remember it's 46.6 centimeters in length. And the old one was 45. So yeah, it's, it's like an additional centimeter and it has like 50 additional pieces. So I guess it's going to be a bit more detailed. Uh, let's just see and, and wait. Um, but yeah, here you go. New submarine, German submarine as well. Of course, Second World War obviously. Anyhow, uh, let's move on to 1x12 vehicles or scaled cars and here actually they announced quite a lot. Um, they are going back to their French license with Citroën or Citroën or whatever you may call it. So we have here of course the DS. So the DS was I guess it's one of the most famous luxuries limousines um, of, of this French car maker. They were built between 1955 and 75. They made a roughly a half one and a half million of these and of course they came in different versions so what Kobe is uh, shipping here now is I think four sets overall so there's going to be the DS19 convertible from 1962 it has 2200 pieces and it's of course scale 1 by 12 that's 40 centimeters um, by 12 in height and 14 or slightly below 15 centimeters um, depth uh, or with whatever you may call it um, and it's of course executive edition so it has this, this typical Kobe stand in black with the amazing Kobe large tiles I mean they make a lot better especially when it comes to large tiles I mean together with Kada I guess Kada is making beautiful 90, 9 by 16 no what am I saying? 8 by 16 tires. Uh, Kobe is doing great. Uh, 6 by 6, 8 by 8, I think. And they just look like look beautiful. I mean, they are a lot better than the stuff that Lego is doing with the 6 by 6 tires, which, if you ask me, are not even tires. But anyhow... Um, so this stand looks beautiful, typically, um, but you can, of course, buy it without it by buying the regular edition, the standard edition, and this is in the DS19 from 1956, so that is an older model, a regular model, not a convertible. It has 2,240 pieces, the convertible only had 2,200, and yeah, it's similar in size. Of course, you do not have the stand, that's actually the main reasons. I mean, but still, it has 40 pieces more, and I guess that's basically the roof, right? You get a roof, not a stand. And I guess because it's a standard edition, it will also be less expensive. Um, yeah, we are talking about the 24346 and the 24347 from Kobe. Um, going to be released in May. And then in June, they will follow up with the DS21. And there they have, again, a standard edition from 1968. It has 2,270 pieces. has a different color. So next to red, green, we have now also a dark blue, which I'm pretty sure is going to look amazing. I don't, I'm not sure if I've ever seen... Um, a dark blue uh, pieces from Kobe. They had them, of course, right? They did the um, fighter jets and the American Navy fighter jets in dark blue, but I personally never have seen it um, myself. Anyhow, 2,270 pieces. And I think then there is a fourth one as well. Yeah. Then there is another DS-19 also going to be released in May. And again, executive edition uh, on a stand. So this is not the convertible. It's the one with roof. But was a stand. Personally, I do not really sure why they put this down down here, not on the other page. But anyhow, this one here will have two thousand four hundred seventy four pieces. We are talking about the two four three five zero, and then they will have another Opel Manta. So that is a German was back basically the in quotes the European muscle car of of Opel slash GM from back in the day. A uh, very famous over here in Europe. Um I guess it's not not really like a Mustang, but I mean it, and yes, I know Mustang is from Ford, but I mean the point is uh like how how popular they are. But the Manta is very well known over here. Anyhow, um this is the 1974 version um and it has 1940 pieces. We're talking about this 24349. It has it is the uh GT version, so the Grand Tour version, and it has a different color. So I guess I mean I'm not really a, a petrol head, as you guys know, but I'm uh, not really sure what this GTE was, but I guess it was something famous. So 
However, I did build the original version. So this is the other one. This is the regular or Manta A version from 1970. So this one I actually did build um, and I liked it. I mean, it was nice. I didn't like really the yellow color, especially they had some problems that the black pieces below the yellow pieces were shining through, which kind of made the, in certain areas, made the car quite ugly actually. So let's, let's hope that this color is doing a better job here. Anyhow, so a lot of one by 12 scale stuff so one gm slash opal and then uh four citrons anyhow let's move on there are a couple of other things that are in the catalog but i do also have them in set db already so there will be p47 thunderbolt um actually they will have two versions i'm showing you here the executive edition that also has a tank trailer uh, we're talking about the 5736 um it will have 567 pieces two minifigures we have already a price indication for one from one uh, shop over here in europe but i mean let's wait and see at this point in time this is only an announcement and like i said they will also have a standard edition on this one that's then the 5737 also again a p47 thunderbolt um it's going to have 477 pieces so without the tank trailer and only one minifigure just the pilot i guess that's all you need and then we move on to Panzerkampfwagen e100 we are talking about the 2572 1510 pieces so um yeah, the E series, I mean, that's that's a prototype. I guess many of you who are into tanks know that. So that is a German prototype during, I think it was built like in the 1943. So basically in the middle, I mean, in the last third of the war. So the E series was supposed to be um, the new tank army or the new tank series um, or tank concept um, for the German army back in the day and they had several I mean the E was just the new entire new series so basically the, it, it was supposed to replace um, Panzerkampfwagen uh, 3, 4, Panther, Tiger they were all supposed to be replaced by these so they had like they had that in, them in different sizes of course but the idea was to have um, a lot of similar components to basically improve the manufacturing process and of course also bring in all the learnings from the war and use newest tech etc etc it was basically the next generation of tanks however um, i think they never completed any of that but e100 was like the heavy one it was not as crazy as mouse um but it um it yeah in a nutshell, it was like an enormous tank. Again, impossible, similar to a mouse, impossible to transport, etc., etc. I think they built basically half of it, um, a prototype with half of it. This is how far they came. So long story short, this is not a, a tank that has ever been seen on European battlefields. And they have it in a regular edition and in a limited edition. So there's not going to be an executive edition, but they will have a limited edition as well. And as you can see, you can open up um, the tower, you can open up the machine room. So it's it's like... It, and because the historical original is like this, it's not as, let's say, gigantic and enormous as mouse. Um, but of course, it is still a lot bigger than, let's say, a tiger. Um, and as a result, um, you can, of course, also from a model perspective, in the same scale, you can do a lot more with it. It is scale 1 by 8 by 28. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff you can do. The limited edition that I'm showing here right now has, of course, a, a ton of edition extras. I mean, they have like five minifigures and they have the Maybach engine extra, etc., etc. So there are a couple of additional. Also here, these schematics. Um, this is, of course, typical limited edition stuff. But keep in mind, limited edition over here in Europe, you can only buy from Kobe directly and they are asking for 125 bucks for this bad boy. It's 1,677 pieces and like I said, five minifigs. Um, so here you go. But like I said, there will be a standard edition. So no executive edition, just standard, right? I mean, Kobe has always have the three editions and with tanks, 
I don't know if there's ever been a tank where they did all three. Usually they do two, like a standard edition is, is like always, usually you have them always, and then sometimes you have limited edition, which is even cooler than executive edition, but it's Kobe exclusive, and then you have executive edition, which is, I guess, much more common. Long story short, let's move on. That was Kobe. Quite some exciting news, especially the train thing, I guess, got a lot of folks over here in Europe are very excited, I do know. Anyhow, let's move on to a couple of announcements um, from... Uh, or availabilities actually from Blue Bricks, that's a shop over here in Europe. They have from Decool and this these new, um, yeah, they call them souped up Need for Speed Brick Cool. Um, these small sports cars. I mean, they are different than I would say than Lego Speed Champions or similar eight stud cars that let's say for instance Mold King is doing. I mean, they look a bit more like almost what Mega Constructs is doing. Um, so let, they are a bit over stylized, 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 stylized. Anyhow, a bit overdrawn. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, and here we have the KC201. And this is the red version. They also have a yellow version and a green version. They are slightly around 400 pieces. And at least over here in Europe, they are asking for 80 bucks. I haven't seen this one in ten, these ones. Uh, all three of them actually I haven't seen internationally, but at least over here in Europe, there is a source. And I mean, they look cool, don't they? I mean, I do like them. I mean, but they are not really realistic cars. Anyhow, let's move on to Fun Hole. And here we have the announcement for the 10th set that this manufacturer is doing. So they don't do many. They're more like the boutique manufacturer, if you will. Um, so this is a 10th set. I mean, they started roughly a year ago, I would say. So on average, maybe one set a month, slightly below that. And this is number 10, the Ruined Temple of the Jungle. I assume uh, we will have availability somewhere around next week, but at this point in time, nothing is confirmed, but hopefully we maybe two weeks from now, we can talk about it and availabilities. I really keen to building this one. I actually already have a, um, a, a sample over here, but yeah, I guess I will build it live over here in Germany on live stream uh, next week. Anyhow, this thing has 1,242 pieces and Fun Hole is asking roughly for 83 bucks. I do assume both here in Europe as well in the US, the best source is actually going to be Amazon. So it's usually how Fun Hole works. So they have their own store, but, and this is actually the link that I currently have here, but usually they also put it um, into Amazon warehouses in the US and in Europe. Um, and yeah, here we go. It's a jungle set. Obviously it is, I guess, a great fit for, and let's say, Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider setting for that matter and as you know there are a lot of rumors that Lego is coming back to uh, Indiana Jones so this could be great fit because I guess Lego will more focus on let's say tiny play sets so this thing here especially with all the lightings this could be a, a match made in heaven and maybe this is also what what fun Hole folks had in mind that this could be great going very well together with Indiana Jones sets but let's see and uh, on its own I think it's it's quite nice I'm not really sure if I understand this blue thing here in the middle I have to think about it a little bit maybe there will be something in the manual we're really looking forward to that one but as always with fun horse sets the lighting is really what sets them apart they usually have very nice design not very nice package um, overall package um, manuals manuals are usually great um, so there's a lot that speaks for them however also usually it means a ton of stickers that's a bit of a drawback um, but I think the real distinguishing factor next to the cool designs that they are doing are um, is the lighting because as many of you may know that's the company that is also doing the light tailing sets and the bricks max uh, light kits anyhow here you go tons of cool lighting really looking forward to this one that's with that we are moving on to lego and here we have a couple of uh announcements first of all another helmet um next after the three star wars helmets like kobe Le uh, cody Leia, and Rex's helmets we have now a marvel helm in this case it's star lord's helmet obviously that as we know i mean as you know uh, this is not a really helmet, it's more mask. So that's actually why it's um, empty on the inside. So you can use it, I don't know, to hold your pants or something. Anyhow, we're talking about the 76251. It's going to be released April 1st. And yeah, basically that's it. It's going to have 602 pieces and Lego is asking for 80 bucks. That's 13.3 uh, cents a piece. 
I'm not sure if you will see this in retail uh, on a broader scale, at least over here in Europe. Um, the signals uh, are not like this. So we do know that Cody and Rex will get um, in, into retail, um, but it seems uh, both Leia and this Ham as well will stay Lego exclusive, at least for, for the foreseeable future. Let's see. We have also a couple of availabilities. So the idea is A-frame cabin, the 21338 um, is available. It's Lego exclusive at this point in time, 180 bucks. I have already built it. I have also put already down here my opinion. I think I already did also created um, a short on this one. Really love the set. It's an amazing set, great design. Yes, the trees are a bit simple compared to the original ideas entry, which by the way, um, the, the original design entry is also linked here from SetDB as well. Um, all set to be links you will find both in the podcast show notes for the listeners as well as for folks on you on youtube you will find it in the description down below anyhow um really like the set um yes it is a, it is a bit smaller than the original entry and especially the trees are much more simple however you have a ton of very cool pieces in there um both of you friends of uh, all of you that are friends of small animals will, will love lots of this stuff as well as if you look at the limb elements you have these beautiful sand green limb elements here you have a lot of dark red stuff here i mean dark red limb elements very hard to come by uh, plus also a couple of new leaves um like the red ones i'm pretty sure are new at least i haven't seen them before so there's a ton of cool stuff lego put like a million tiles in here here. Um, there are, if I recall correctly, no stickers, but a couple of prints. So um, yeah, it is a very well-made set. Um, like I said, the only drawback is a bit how simple the trees are. And the biggest change, by the way, um, if you look at the ideas design entry, is that they added a back wall. I think it talked about this already in the announcement, right? Next to that, there's not much to add. Um, I would have loved if they would have done more of this um, hammer, a Tor's hammer building technique, but I mean... The one that we have is already pretty great. And there's, like I said, there is like a million, and I don't understand why this is not in here, but there's like a lot of printed tiles in there. I think I counted something around 35, 36. So that's really a lot of tiles. Anyhow, let's move on to a couple of, I guess, less interesting sets. So the Bird's Nest, the 4639 is available now as well. Um, ah, Brick Fanatics has already looked into this one. 13 bucks, 232 pieces, uh, 5.6 cents a piece. Also available, of course, is uh, the Dried Flower Centerpiece. Brothers Brick has already looked at them. Uh, we're talking about the 10314 and Lego is asking for 50 bucks. And at least in Europe, one um, retail uh, shop already believes they will get it. And then you have, no, this was the one. Then we have the white flower bouquet. And that's the 10313. Um, it has 939 pieces. And yeah, this one will go into retail, um, at least over here in Europe. You can already see that the price is coming down. Um, anyhow, Lego is listing it for 60 bucks. That's 6.4 cents a piece. Um, and then we have, of course, the 100 years of Disney celebration Brickhead collection. Uh, we're talking about the 40622, 40 bucks, typical four piece or four, four head count Brickheads set whatever um and yeah here you go 501 pieces 40 bucks eight cents a piece that's not many pieces so usually brickheads have a bit more so most brickheads i guess are more in the let's say six to seven cents um a piece range so these are around eight so they're rather simple that's basically what i'm trying to say here and then we have actually this here um, is uh, we are now actually at Mold King and they have at least we have one shop over here in Europe that and I've seen this these sets in China yet um, but they have announced that they will get into in stock a ton of Mold King flowers so if you look at these I mean let's just go to flowers here and yeah come on mouse talk to me 
And as you can see here, it's a very long list. And so please, I mean, I, I will link in the description down below a couple of SetDB entries, but you can just click on flowers or click on Mold King um, in there and then you see all of them. So basically they have this 2-4 series. And as you can see, we're talking about 14, if I'm not miscounting, different plants. So this is like typical flowers, as we have seen from many other brands, including Lego. However, compared to Lego, what a lot of the alternative or other companies are doing, um, they are just creating single flowers. So you can basically combine your bouquet yourself, while Lego is usually making a big one. I mean, they also have smaller ones, but in, in you know, in general, they go for less like this entire thing. And here you have much smaller sets, um, usually around 100 pieces, and you can basically build this yourself. Anyhow, they have a lot of these, um, and then they have also potted uh, ones uh, or flowers that are in a pot. Um, and here we have a fairy lily, birds of paradise, eternal butterfly, three at this point that I'm aware of. And yeah, here you go. A ton of flowers for Mold King. Like I said, I will not go into all the details. Uh, you will find the links down below. And then from TGL, we have again also an announcement for an enormous Technic set. So this is, I mean, I guess it's also from Blue Bricks that translated um, this in a very creative way and they call it the Dark Blue Metallic Supercar. I don't know, basically it doesn't have a name. Doesn't matter, TGL is building this one. It has scaled from one to six. I think that is the lowest number I've ever had in a Technic set. It has 5,588 pieces, which is crazy. And we're talking about the 5037. Yeah, so if you're into Technic and cars and you want to build the biggest bad boy you can find on the planet, then here you go. It's 67 and a half centimeters in length, 33 in width and 22 height. So it's it's like a gigantic vehicle. How well it's actually going to work? Eh, I would be careful here, but I guess it's it's a, it's a challenge for sure. Anyhow, I think the biggest Technic set I've ever built was the Phantasma sports car, and this was a lot smaller than this one. And I mean, I already thought that the Phantasma sports car from Kayla was enormous. If you want to go a bit smaller, maybe this thing is for you. We have availability over here in Europe of a new Zembo Technic set, the sports car in blue-white, is it called by this? Um, but actually, I don't know the real name. We're talking about the 701037. It has 1,857 pieces, 45 and a half centimeters in length. So that's like almost tiny. It's one by 10 in scale and it's 80 euros. That's 4.3 cents a piece. So a bit smaller. That was that. A set updates for this week. So let's move on to um, mocks of the week. And here I think I've picked this week a collection of six mocks, I think. So let's start, get started first by Small Lion Knight's Castle by Mark3794. It's actually free of charge, but you only get the IO file, so not a PDF. Nevertheless, I think it's worthwhile to look at this one also on, on the building techniques behind it, um, because I think it is something that fits very well to what currently is done by Lego, i.e. the Lion Knight's Castle. It has similar building techniques, similar piece collection. So it should fit quite well, but it also has a blue roof on the tower. So it could even be like you're putting this thing like in the center on one side, you pick the, the current um, creator castle. On the other side, you pick the, put the uh, night, Lion Knight's castle and here you go, right? This thing is just combining uh, both schemes uh, or schemas, if you will. Anyhow, this thing has 1,140 uh, parts and I think Mark has done a great job here. It is fairly detailed, um, not overly detailed for sure. But yeah, it's like I said, I think it is a good fit to Lion Knight's Castle. And with that, we are moving on to Juventus Engineering System. And they have done a Fonder Hall craft, uh, famously known as the Ship of Lucen um, in Andorra and Star Wars Ender. And personally, I'm, I'm a big believer that Lego will make a ship on this set. However, at least not in the foreseeable future, they, they won't do an UCS set. So this thing here could be interesting to look at because uh, Aventus Engineering System has done a UCS size uh, ship here with 3,770 pieces. And I must say from a design perspective, very well done. I mean, it's also presented very well, we have to be honest here, but I think the design is solid. It's fairly detailed. It is um, for sure quite, uh, you know, it's not a small ship. Um, as you can see, we have even real photos here, so it does work. Um, so yeah, what's not to love about this one? I'm a 
personally a big fan of Ander. Um, and Lucius, uh, Lucian, sorry, is a great character. Um, so yeah, this is really something I would like to see as a set from Lego as well. But hey, if you want, if you have the pieces or willing to buy them, um, I think this mock from Juventus Engineering System is a great idea. 25 bucks, I guess that's that's fair, uh, considering the size. And then we have here from a uh, Debrick, a Grand Corner Boutique Hotel. We have actually seen on Rebrickable several of these mocks. Basically, let's make a bigger hotel, like a real hotel, because obviously, I mean. Right, the original hotel is, is quite tiny actually. It's very boutique, let's put it that way. So this one is basically an alternate build, not entirely. It has like, you need X eight extra parts. I guess that's fair. So I would still call it an alternate. Basically you buy the boutique hotel set twice. And as you can see here, like you have a similar experience. It's just the, um, so you have a bigger gallery um, I would get. I would say the the ground floor of the hotel is almost the same size. It's slightly bigger than the original one, but of course you have a lot more rooms than um, in the like like in the top floor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as you can see here, the design is very similar. The bathroom is almost the same. Um, the master bedroom looks very similar. Furniture is very similar. So it's it's a similar experience. So if you love the boutique hotel but you just want to have it slightly bigger. Um, here you go, just buy two of them and you will have a lot of fun. And then let's move on to another set, a set that I personally do not really understand just because I'm too stupid, but in a nutshell, that's a diesel engine in Technic with 10,415 pieces. And you can put a Mindstorms in there to control it. It's just crazy. I had to bring this, I put this in the list for this week, but personally, I mean, I cannot grasp um, actually <laughs> what this thing, I mean, you know, it's, it's so enormous and it has like, it's just an enormous undertaking. I can, I cannot almost, I'm, I'm doubting that this thing can actually be built, but I do believe them. I think they know what they are doing. The, the team that le around Lego Laos uh, that worked on this one. So, um, yeah. So if you're into Technic and if you want to get huge um, and if you're willing and if you have the budget, here you go, 35 bucks for the man, um, manual. Sorry, I'm still a bit sick. Um, anyhow, um, yeah, if you have the budget to get all the pieces together, I'm pretty sure 35 bucks. Um, I mean, this could even be worthwhile just to buy to, to take a look at, at this, right? Um, but anyhow, this is a marine or ship diesel engine. It's in Technic. It's enormous and it's cool. Anyhow, let's move on something that I would actually build. And this is a distant echo diorama from Clone Wars Season 2. I guess next to the last episode of se Season 7, I would say this one here is, is one of my two favorites of all time in Clone Wars. Actually, I really loved Season 7. I think it's just amazing. It's great. I mean, there are a couple of amazing ones. I mean, there are many great seasons. Uh, many great episodes, I, I want to say, in all the seasons, but season seven had a couple of real beauties. And A Distant Echo, that's of course the episode where um, Bad Batch um, sees the light of uh, the Star Wars universe. And of course, it's that this is around Echo, actually, great name, by the way, for a di diorama. And it's a great diorama, right? There's echo hanging here, and I mean, yeah, it's just it's just great. I guess this is uh, this is Rex here, and um, it's a very small diorama, but it brings the point across. It's very well done. Should fit very well in your Lego diorama, Star Wars diorama collection. I have a couple of these actually over here. I think I have like eight on my shelf. The three from Lego and five um, mock designs by Brett, but this one here by Blockner is also. Uh, very well done. Um, speaking of um, Star Wars dioramas, there's another one that I personally think is really cool. It's a bit too large. I cannot fit it into my shelf. Otherwise, I would definitely look into this. And this, and this is the best pin duel. Obviously, the very famous like Luke, I'm your father uh, kind of a scene. But it's very well done. I mean, it's like another approach on the diorama because it's so huge. At least this is how it looks like, right? It's almost not 
it's it doesn't even almost it's almost not even fitting in the diorama concept um, because it's basically just on a stand. But I still believe you could combine it very well with the dioramas. You could almost introduce another layer, right? Because it's so so much taller than the regular dioramas. But yeah, it's very well done, very nicely constructed, and it's a very famous scene. Maybe it is like. Maybe together with the destruction of the Death Star, it's, I guess, one of the most famous scenes in the movies, in the original series, I guess. Um, so anyhow, let me know in the comments what you think about this one. And then we have another one from Lux Bricks. So Lux Bricks has done, I think, personally, one of the coolest series of mocks that could um, basically it could basically attach or add to your Lionel's castle. So he has really grasp the Lion Knight's castle design and just created a ton of, of extensions. I really like his uh, Lion Knight's tournament connection. He has done the small outpost, the carriage. It's, it's just great. And now he's also giving some love to the forest men. Before that, he has created the archery. So I really recommend taking a look at them. They are also very well presented here on Breakable, no doubt about that. But I think the design is solid. And I mean, yes, it is the simple design, if you will, that, um, however, is the design that Lego has decided to go for with Lion Knight's castle. Um, so there are for sure mocks out there around Forest Man and, and, and the castle scene that are much more detailed, much more modern. But um, obviously, Lego has decided to go for a rather more simple design or simplistic design with Lion Knight's castle. And Lux Bricks has picked this one up. And here you go. If you like the Lion Knight's castle design and want to extend it, um, this is the way to go. Five bucks, by the way, for this manual. And now let's move on to Lego Ideas. And here we have, I think, four entries that made the 10,000 uh, 10, by Lobster Termidor. We have from a Twilight, the Cullen House. Um, actually, I I think this one is in Portsmouth, Oregon, um, if I recall correctly. I mean, the, the real house, the house that is used as a movie prop, if you will. Um, obviously, this is from Twilight. I actually have never seen Twilight, but I've seen pictures of the house. I can really recommend to Google this one, the Cullen House. It's a beautiful piece of architecture. I think it was recently sold for two and a half million. So it's for sure not a cheap one. But um, it is a very beautiful uh, house, sound and solid architecture. And um, here you go. Um, now we have a Lego set of that. I think this has actually a good chance, right? I mean, it's a relatively famous license. Lego Ideas team loves to go for licenses. So here you go. Carlin's house, like the design as well. And then we have Where's Wally and Waldo. I think that is... I think my, my kids had these books, but I think over here in Germany they are called differently. Anyhow, basically, right, this is the kind of books where you basically uh, have pictures and the pictures are crazy full of stuff and then you're looking for things, right? You're searching. This is, I guess, um, the idea of these books. That's at least my understanding. If, I, if I'm connecting the right dots here because like I said my kids had something like this Wally Waldo as a, as a term I'm not aware of maybe that exists over here but I'm not sure anyhow let's come to the ideas entry this thing is just amazing because there are so many details so many small pieces all these nano figures it's just great right I mean I really like the design it's friendly it's open it's colorful and it's just exciting to look at. So big fan would love to build this one. Yeah, let's see. I mean, I don't know. I, I personally, I don't think that Lego would do it, but I think I would really love it. This would be so much fun. And I think this could be an idea set that is great for the entire family. I think everybody would love this thing. Kids would love it, you know, parents would love it. Um, it would be amazing to see this one as a set uh, come to life. Let's move on to the Ogle Creek Saw. Uh, I guess that Creek Sawmill, um, that I guess how it's called. It's unfortunately only rendered, um, which is very unfortunate and also done in a, in a kind of weird, glossy way. So that, that makes it a bit tough. Um, but of course, a Krakenator in this case could... Um, basically animate the pictures by you know by doing it like this um but yeah i'm not so i'm not really big not a big fan of the presentation but i think the design is solid um i really do like it of I mean olive green is 
uh, is, not, is of course always a great color choice. Um, however, I'm pretty sure Lego would never do it like this. This would this would be so expensive. But anyhow, um, it's a nice design. Um, and yeah, of course, I'm I'm also um, in the in the camp of people who would love to see a Western set uh, by Lego again. Um, and then we have from Bricky Brick again. I think Klaus Toys. I think this thing made it already the second time. Anyhow, it's kind of a modular with a Christmassy style. That's actually something I would. I mean, we had Home Alone, of course, but I don't know. Wouldn't wouldn't you also love a modular building by Lego in a Christmas setting? I mean, Chris, Lego is doing these amazing Winter Village sets, but I mean, they are like they are very expensive, but they are like child toys, right? Especially the buildings. The buildings are so ridiculously tiny. So going all in with a two thousand or maybe maybe even better a three thousand piece Christmas set. This is the kind of thing I would love to see. Maybe we, like I said, we had Home Alone, but um, I want to see something like this, like Winter Village, 3,000 pieces. This is the kind of stuff I would love to see from Lego. So awesome that Bricky Brick has done this. Obviously, Lego would never do it under the Ideas brand, but yeah. Uh, creator or icons, Winter Village, 3,000 pieces, modular. This is Lego. Do it. Just do it. Don't don't ask questions. Just do it. Anyhow, I hope you like the show. For those of you who watch this on YouTube, please leave a like or a comment or even better, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for listening. See you next week.